All right, we're in 3ds Max. We're going to take a look at particle systems. So we're going to go to our create menu, and then in geometry, we're going to click and go down to particle systems. We're not going to look at the PF source, um, which is the more advanced particle system. We're going to look at some of these really basic particle systems. Now, these are not going to look photorealistic for you, but they do have some uses, things like motion graphics you can use them for. So I'm going to go in and just start with the snow, and I'm clicking and dragging out the emitter right clicking to end that operation I'm just going to pull it up a bit and change my angle. So in the modifier tab we'll be able to see the controls and there aren't many controls for this. When I click and drag on the timeline you'll see I'm getting snow. And I'm just going to pull out a little bit so we can see actual particles. So in our viewport we have a count of 100, render count of 100. By having a separate count for the viewport from the renderer this allows, if we do have a slower computer, to be able to lessen the amount we see in the viewport and still have um, a realistic play playback for this. Here is the size of the flake, and then the speed in which the flake is moving, and below the speed we have the variation. So whenever you see variation, it's for the object above. So we're adding variation to the speed. So some are moving a little quicker, so that's our variation. And if I take this and just click play, we'll see that the particles start frame zero, and then they continue to play through frame 100 on my visible timeline. So with this, we can add tumble, we can add a tumble rate, we can change the display type, and then change what's being rendered. Here's our time, and it says the life is 30. So after 30 frames, the first particle that was created will die. Um, so anything created on frame 5 will disappear at frame 35. And here's the size of our emitter we can change. Um, but it's really simple. So let's take a look at another type. We have blizzard. And blizzard would be similar. Right click, drag this up. But it gives us a lot more options. So if we go into blizzard, you'll see we have our particle emitter, whether or not we see the emitter, whether we're using the tick, the mesh, but here it allows us to have a percentage of the particles visible in the viewport. Or we can go to our total rate and then say we want a total of, let's say, 1,000 particles. Um, and then during this animation it will play 1,000 particles. So you'll notice it stopped emitting at frame 30, and that's because we have our start and end particle and this is going to stop at 30, we can change this to 60, and now we have less particles because I have a total use rate of 1,000. So now it is stretching those 1,000 over 60 frames. Um, each are still alive for 30 frames. Here we have our particle size with variation and grow and fade. So if I have a mesh and I'm going to make the mesh size a little bit larger. So we're going to come in and here's our size. I'm just going to make it, let's say, 2. And here's the particle at 2. So if I have a grow of 10, it's going to take 10 frames to get to the full size. So we're just going to change that to zero. And now it starts at the full size. And at the end of the particle's life, so around frame 30, they start to fade and get smaller. So you'll see they're smaller here. So if I change that again to zero, now they're not going to fade. Um, you can see the, the fading. Uh, and a lot of this we're going to look at when we get to super spray. So I'm not going to get into this. They're really similar settings. So that is our blizzard. If we come back and we look at spray, it's the same sort of emitter, but a lot less settings. And then if we go to super spray, super spray gives you sort of like a little fountain spray. So with this, it's just one beam 